this is my 69 Impala. Um, I'm getting ready to put this up for sale after 20-some uh, years of ownership. Um, it's a two-door Impala Custom Coupe. Triple black, black vinyl top, black paint, black bucket seat and console interior. Um, I bought this car in 1996, and it's been rained on, uh, sprinkled on actually twice, once on the way to the drag strip, and uh, one other time at a car show. Got extensive paperwork on this car. Um, it sat around um, from probably 1970 to 78 with probably 5,000 miles on it. Um, the mileage right now is around 115,000 or so. I'm not real sure. Um, I have some tack and gauges blocking the odometer. Um, I'll get you that information though later on in this video. But uh, it is a huge car. Um, I've done everything I can to make it fast. I like to think I can keep up with the Camaros and Mustangs if I have to. Weighs 4,400 pounds, 4,600 with me in it. It is a tank. I tried to, when I did the build, tried to make it look as, uh, as copo as I possibly could. Um, nearest I can tell, it was painted once, probably in the mid-80s. Um, I'm not even sure it was a full paint job. Some of this might be factory paint. I'm not real sure. Seems to be no body work whatsoever. Um, maybe just a spray or something. I don't know. Um, it's not a show car. It does got uh, a couple spots where somebody went stupid with a buffer back, you know, 20, 30 years ago. A little bit of checking and spot rust there, but uh, extremely minor. You see a lot of these cars that are rotted down here where leaves and such um, get trapped down in the fender and the bottom of the doors. And of course, quarter panels rust out. Um, this car is really super clean. Okay, we'll start up here at the uh, big end. And what we have here is this car was originally a 350 uh, with a three-speed automatic. Um, it was a factory buckets and console, and it had the stirrup shifter um, on the console, and I replaced that with the factory um, four-speed plate when I uh, put the stick shift in. So it came with cruise control and air conditioning, power brakes, power steering, That's about it for the creature comfort options. Um, I have gotten rid of the air conditioning. I took all that off. And um, this panel here is made by American Graffiti. It's an online company and it's, it's a heater only cover uh, that covers up the giant hole where the air conditioner sits. Because these cars were made, if you had air conditioning, it's actually a different firewall from if you had a standard heater only car and it's, it's got a great big hole so you can't just put a standard heater only box on this car if it came with air conditioner and american graffiti makes that particular repop item um, and enlarges it to cover up the uh, air conditioning hole in the firewall so it's really a nice way to clean up your old car if you want to get rid of air conditioning um, i also have currently have the wipers off and the wiper motor um, I have the cruise control and the complete air conditioning system with the hoses and the evaporator, compressor and all the bracketry and all of that is in this giant box. In fact, here's the original AC box. Condensers in here and then just tons of parts in there. Not much of the uh, small block stuff was reused. I had to go with the Desert Cooler um, Delco, a larger radiator. And then uh, this is actually a factory big block fan shroud. 
power steering pump, brackets, everything you see here is the correct um, big block stuff for this particular car if it had a 427. So talking about the motor, um, first of all, this is not a 427. This is a 502 crate motor. This is the iron head version called a 502 HO. It's rated at uh, 450 horse and <laughs> 550 foot pounds of torque at like 3,200. So when you drive this car, it's very much like driving a diesel, like a, a modern Dodge truck or something. It's just a, got an insane amount of torque. Easily overpowers the tires. You have to be careful. Um, but uh, it sure is a fun car to drive. And it's not wild. This is a rectangular port, 8.5 to 1. It's got a low rise intake, which means I don't need a hood scoop. And um, it'll run on anything. 87 octane. It never knocks, never pings, never runs hot. It's just all around a great mild motor. Uh, my wife drives this car. You don't have any of the, you know, typical high revving, high compression, hot rod issues that you have with a lot of built cars. So when I did the swap back in, uh, I think it was around 2004 or something like that, I completely rebuilt the front end with ball joints and, um, you know, all new bushings and went through everything and um, uh, big block springs. Um, Moving back from the motor, um, next we have a, uh, I did have to change the oil pan on this motor because it came with a truck oil pan. And uh, these cars uh, in 69 were uh, what's called rear steer, where the tie rod is actually behind the cross member. So you have to use a, um, a Chevelle pan on there, which they make for the 502 uh, block. So I had to buy that from Chevy and then put on the, uh, um, passenger car pan instead of the truck pan and once I did that everything bolted in fine um, I did uh, source the clutch pedal and z-bar and clutch linkage all of that came out of a 68 biscane I found in a junkyard with the three on the tree and it all bolted up um, the bell housing is a Lakewood um, Hayes flywheel center force dual disc clutch um, and all of that was put in, uh, it's all SFI rated, uh, solid motor mounts also, um, up front. And then, uh, I'm running a drive shaft loop. Um, and uh, most of these were done as a requirement for, uh, NHRA. Uh, the transmission, I, I drag raced this car for, oh, a couple years with a super T10 and I, you know, kept blowing those up. So finally I moneyed up and put a Tremec TKO 600 in here. And it's a five speed top loader type transmission. And uh, ever since then, it, the car is just, it makes the car. Uh, incredible transmission, great to drive. I'm 410 geared and it's got like a 0.8 overdrive and I can run a 70 mile an hour all day. It's not a problem. Um, again, you know, it's, it's a hot rod, but it doesn't have any of that quirky, uh, you know, 60s muscle car stuff that you have to put up with. Uh, you know, 60 mile an hour at 3,000 RPM just doesn't work um, in today's world. So you got a fifth gear that you can grab, but um, the console's a factory four-speed plate, factory console. Uh, I did have to cut the, the tunnel out and build a new tunnel that was taller to clear the tray mech. Um, and if you were to compare this side by side with a factory 69, you would see that the console would, would actually be sitting about an inch and a half lower than this one. It's so subtle that you don't even notice it when you glance in the car. People just assume it's a factory stick shift car and all of this is original. But in reality, there's a taller hump because the uh, Tramec transmission is quite a bit larger than um, a Muncie or a Super T10. And I do also have the hump that I cut out is in that box of stuff, the original hump for the floor, along with the uh, horseshoe stirrup shifter. 
and the linkage and all of that is still uh, comes with the car. Uh, drive shafts, custom drive shaft uh, made at Patterson up the road here. Um, the rear axle is the factory 12 bolt, and this was a four link car from the factory. Um, they made them. Uh, most of the 10 bolts were a three link and then the 12 bolts were a four link. So um, in the rear axle, we've got a um, factory 12 bolt. We're running a Eaton um, posit track unit and Richmond 411 gears. And then the uh, upper control arms are UMI adjustable. And I believe the lower ones also are. And I'm running uh, Firestone airbags in the uh, rear springs to try and uh, get the car to launch a little better. Uh, I'm running a Hotchkiss adjustable pan hard bar to keep it centered left to right. Um, all the bushings back here are all like uh, hard bushings, you know, no, no rubber stuff on the rear suspension. Um, and it's all in an effort to get the car to, you know, hook up and haul uh, out of the hole. I, I run these um, Mickey Thompson um, DOT radials uh, when I go to the drag strip. And also these wheels are 15 by 8 wheels, but you'll notice they're not a rally. So this is a standard steel wheel in a 15 by 8, and it takes these uh, same exact hub caps and everything. So when you put those tires on the car, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like you're, you know, driving around with like, you know, weld wheels or something on the back end of it. Fuel system is a aeromotive giant fuel pump. Way too big for the amount of horsepower I'm making. And I stumped the uh, original tank. It's all in good shape. And then the filter is here and the pump is here. I also added a F41 rear sway bar. And uh, the 12 bolt is all in good shape. And you can see it's even got the uh, limited slip tag on the bolt and there's a I don't know if you can see it there's the red airbags inside the springs a dual exhaust three inch with turn downs I couldn't find a local shop to run uh, up and over the axle and out here which is what I wanted but um, the only thing that they could do that with was uh, a two and a half and I said well I want three inch all the way out, so we just turned them down in front of the axle. Better shot of the interior. Um, the original, um, this is all original upholstery except for these two panels on the front seats. All the sides and the bottoms and the backs and everything in the entire back seat, all the door panels, console, dash pad, everything. This is all 100% original except for these right here and my upholstery guy took out the these original um, detail buttons and and put them back in when he redid um, these two panels so looks just like it came from the factory all the dash lights and interior lights work and um, you know reverse lights when you put the Stick shift in reverse, the lights come on, and kind of freak for details like that. The wipers and everything do work, but I never drive this car if there's any chance of rain. And uh, I just took them off. It cleans up the um, underside of the hood a little bit. You might think that you know what a muscle car trunk is. This is truly a drive-in trunk. All of this is absolutely original, original spatter paint, not even a hint of any sort of patching or anything back in here. This is all original and all just solid as the day it left the factory. This is a red line spare tire I put in. One thing I did do is swap out the rear bumper. Uh, the one that came on the car had a couple dents in it. So I found this bumper that was in really great shape. Only thing is it has the optional um, bumperettes and the front one, oddly enough, has, I think, um, the holes for the bumperettes right here. So 
But that is the that is the front bumper that came on the car, and it's it's mint. All the trims in excellent shape. Um, the rear bumper is the only you know big item that I had to buy and put on here. Um, I put the wheel moldings on here also. Um, when I bought the car, it didn't have them. And I think if the car was any other color than black, I'd have been fine with that. But uh, because it's a black tire, black wheel well, and a black car, I don't know, it just seemed like it needed the chrome uh, moldings, stainless moldings around the wheel wells just to, just to kind of make the car look a little better. So I put those on. Uh, car does have uh, interior wise it came with the uh, original um, it came with the stereo that had the flip over AM FM display on it and uh, this car came with something called the quadraphonic sound or something and you know it had a unit in here and then it had a separate little amplifier and you could add ambiance to it almost like a reverb to it strange I, you know kind of i guess back in 69 was pretty cool um, the car does have tilt wheel and uh the um the cool thing is is uh going for the copo look um i actually found the correct um radio delete block off plate for this car um, and that's a rare find because it's wood grained on the impalas and uh, almost all of the cars that would have had a radio delete would have been a bel air or a biscayne and uh, they they are not wood grain and uh, the fact that i actually found a a block off plate in the wood grain for the higher end trim model is a, a little unique um, i did get in a bidding war on ebay for that plate but um, when I had the interior out, I, uh, it's got four Alpines, two in the kick panels and two on the rear deck in the factory location. And they're all wired up to the glove box. And uh, at the time, you know, there wasn't quite uh, this, this new thing that I had heard about called Bluetooth had just come out. And, uh, you know, I never really finished it. The car does not have a stereo right now, but it does have brand new... Um, uh, really nice Alpine speakers and they're all wired back here. So if you wanted to install some sort of hidden um, You know amplifier receiver for um, to hook your phone up to um, That's what I would do um, and I kind of got that half half done for the car. So um, It's just in 2004. It was just starting to be like rumors of that. Of course now, you know, everything is Bluetooth, but uh, I just never got around to it when I drive it. I like to hear it, you know. You can tell where the door shuts how nice this car is. Underneath, you know, its frame and everything is just absolutely perfect. Original vinyl top. There's not a divot anywhere on it. Not a cut, not a scratch. And best of all, it's not all rotted out underneath here like a lot of vinyl tops are. I know some of the B-body Chryslers were real bad about that pull the vinyl top off and there's giant holes in behind it from the moisture getting trapped in there. But I think this car has been um, garaged most of its life. Uh, this is the incorrect mirror. It should be uh, rectangular with a Chevy emblem on it. That's what the car came with. I never jacked with it. But you can buy the original mirror. Um, it's still available. Um, I did take the antenna out and I put a plug in it. So, you know, if you were ever to get the car painted, I would definitely fill, weld that up and fill that in. The paint on this car is incredible for, for 30 or 40 year old paint. That's me right there. <laughs> Super clean car. They, you just don't find them this clean. Um, you know, when you consider in 1969 what else they had, the Chevelle, the Camaro, the Impala, not to mention all the other, you know, cars that were around. This was the old lady grocery getter of the bunch. Um, they did make them with 427s. Um, they made them with a lot of motors, actually. 
um, 307, 327, 350, 396 two barrel, the only time they ever put a 396 two barrel in a, in a full size car. Um, and then two versions of the 427. Um, one is the, um, I think it's a 335 horse. Um, and that one will have an enclosed black uh, single snorkel air cleaner and a uh, hydraulic cam, fairly mild. And then the other one was the uh, L72, which is a 425 horse, 427. And uh, those, they only made uh, 546 of them in 69. And uh, those are super rare, obviously. Um, I know where there's one sitting in a field, um, not far from here, actually. Um, but this one, I did the best I could to clone a uh, 425 horse, 427. Um, so uh, it's raining like a banshee right now, and as soon as it clears up, uh, we'll back this out, and I'll, I'll get some better shots of it outside. So uh, during the rebuild, um, all of this goes with the car. Um, I have a bunch of spare parts in here, and all the original parts that I took off are are all stored inside here. Um, and then I have a uh, complete uh, full-size assembly manual with all the part numbers and options and wiring diagrams. And um, I use this when I um, did the big block swap, looking to see, I mean, it's such a rare car that there's, there's certain options and stuff that you don't even really, uh, you would never find them. So you don't know what it's supposed to be or what it's supposed to look like. But it's all in here, all the console and clutch layout and all the motor stuff. And then I found this old ad with yours. Guess who that is right there on the hood of the car? Yes, that's a good old Mr. Simpson. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I got a bunch of paperwork going back to the early 70s with um, inspection stickers. And that's how I know the car sat for so long. Um, because I have those inspection stickers back when they used to have to uh, certify it um, every year we had inspections in Indiana um, and so it would go and get inspected and there's several years in a row where it's like five miles the odometer changed five miles in one year so whoever owned it it did not get a lot of use in fact I think it had 68,000 miles in like 1978 so from, I don't know, from, from 78 to 86 or so, there seems to be someone that got up to 113,000 during that time frame. And so someone owned it and drove it quite a bit during those years in the 80s. Uh, but then I think it sat ag around again. Um, you know, and, and when I first saw this car for sale, it was actually in a Chevy dealer in the center of the showroom floor. Uh, and I had gone in there uh, I'd actually gone in there to look at the new Impala SS and there's the 96 Impala SS brochure and it has a black one and I went there to look at these cars and I saw this one and I'm like oh wait a minute you know I like this a lot better than a 96 so I ended up working a deal for it and I uh, traded my hopped up El Camino I had at the time um, and some cash. And when this was a 350 automatic, it was also a 273 rear axle. It was a 12 volt, but it was just a highway gear. And um, I can remember we had to pour some water under the tires and have two of my buddies bounce the rear bumper while I power braked it just to get it to spin the single track one rear tire. It was really super low performance and it probably ran a 25 second quarter mile. Um, Real dependable and a nice cruiser. It just was not fast, and uh, that doesn't work around here. Everything I've ever owned was fast as hell, and I like them that way. And I don't see the point of having a car like this if you're if it doesn't have muscle behind it. So that's what prompted the big block swap. And a car this big, it really it really does need a big block to make it go. You know, it just it just feels right. Um, it's much nicer than when it was a a 350.